With The Mandalorian less than six months away, it occurs to me that there might be some people out there that need a primer on Mandalorian culture. The scene from Celebration alone had some references that might require a little explanation, so today I'll be running through the history of the Mandalorian people so everyone will be ready for the show when it premieres on Disney Plus later this year. The first time we ever saw Mandalorian armor was in The Empire Strikes Back with the introduction of the bounty hunter Boba Fett. His look is what inspired the entire culture. The character got some backstory in old Legends books and comics that was eventually wiped away with the introduction of Jango Fett in Attack of the Clones, but it was revealed in the Clone Wars series that the two characters are not, in fact, Mandalorians. I'll come back to that idea later in the video. So the Season 2 episode of The Clone Wars, The Mandalore Plot, was our first actual look at the Mandalorian people, their culture, architecture, and so on. Mandalorians were humans from the Mandalorian sector of space, which centered around their homeworld, Mandalore, in the Outer Rim. The surrounding planets were ruled by clans and houses of varying degrees of power and status. It sounds similar to Game of Thrones, where one house might rule a significant area, and then they have clans that are loyal to them. Historically, Mandalorians were known as warriors, mercenaries, and bounty hunters. Thousands of years before the events of the films, they spread across the galaxy, conquering planet after planet until they ran into the Jedi Order. They were outmatched in a fight against beings that could use the Force, so they developed new technology and weapons to level the playing field. The end result was their hallmark Mandalorian armor. It was made from Beskar, more commonly known as Mandalorian iron. It was a strong metal able to withstand blaster fire. It was tradition for the armor to be passed down from generation to generation. For example, Sabine Wren's armor was known to be at least 500 years old by the time of the Empire. While every set of armor was unique, the T-shaped visor of the helmet was always present. Gear like whipcord throwers, flamethrowers, energy shields, pulse generators, and jetpacks could often be seen in their armaments. Perhaps the most unique piece of Mandalorian technology would be the Darksaber. It was created by a Mandalorian named Tar Vizsla. It was a lightsaber with a black blade and a unique shape that became a symbol of leadership for the Mandalorian people. Despite their advanced weapons and armor, the Mandalorians were defeated by the Jedi Order in a war that lasted about 1,000 years. Mandalore was scorched into a lifeless desert in the final battle, which put a stop to Mandalore's expansion as they focused on rebuilding their home. Again, they had to develop new technology to survive, creating domed cities in which they could live. When Tar Vizsla passed away, the Jedi took his Darksaber and locked it inside their temple on Coruscant for safekeeping. About 3,000 years after the Mandalorian Wars, a group of Mandalorians were able to infiltrate the temple and reclaim the weapon. Nearly another thousand years after that, the new leader of Mandalore, Duchess Satine Kryze, pushed her people to abandon their warrior past to become a peaceful society. This sparked a civil war that the warriors ultimately lost. Mandalore became a pacifist planet, and the warrior clans were exiled to the Moon Concordia. There, a group led by the descendant of Tar Vizsla, Pre Vizsla, reformed an old Mandalorian extremist group known as Death Watch. Wielding the Darksaber, he committed terrorist attacks on his homeworld, and during the Clone Wars he sided with Maul to create the Shadow Collective. They plotted to overthrow and kill the Duchess, but when they were successful, Maul defeated Vizsla in single combat, taking up the Darksaber and command of Death Watch for himself. The whole ordeal threw Mandalore into chaos. Maul was eventually driven off the planet by former Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano and a contingent of clones, but he took the Darksaber with him. With no clear leader, the Empire easily took control of Mandalorian space. An Imperial weapon known as the Arc Pulse Generator was able to superheat Beskar, incinerating the person inside. This kept the entire culture under their command until Sabine Wren, who helped design the weapon, returned to Mandalore with the Darksaber, which she recovered from Maul. She led an attack to destroy the Arc Pulse Generator and passed the Darksaber to Bo-Katan, the surviving sister of Duchess Satine. That's the last we've seen of Mandalore or any of its people. We don't know what they were up to during the Galactic Civil War, and I think it's likely they continued fighting the Empire in their own sector of space. But jumping to the clip from The Mandalorian, Werner Herzog's character claims that Mandalore is in disarray, so I'd guess that fight didn't go so well. Herzog also offers to pay the Mandalorian in Beskar, Mandalorian iron, stamped with the Imperial insignia. He acts like he's a good guy, giving Beskar back to a Mandalorian where it belongs, but clearly it was the Empire that took it in the first place, and they didn't even use it for armor, it seems. They used it for currency, which I imagine is kind of an insult to the Mandalorian people. 
At the celebration panel, Jon Favreau mentioned the fact that we don't know where the Mandalorians were during the Galactic Civil War, so I think we might get some answers over the course of the show. Thematically, I think it would be cool to explore what it means to be a Mandalorian. We could follow a character that has perhaps abandoned his people during a time of struggle and he has to come to terms with that, or maybe even help lead. Or maybe he could be like the Fets, not really a Mandalorian, he's just posing in the armor, but he could still come to be accepted by the culture in the end. I see a couple of interesting ideas the show could explore. But that's all for now. Hopefully that gives you a good foundation for Mandalorian culture if you were in the dark. Or if you're a diehard member of the Mandalorian Mercs, maybe this was a good refresher. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.